Good morning, brothers and sisters. 1 Timothy 3.15 is a foundational passage about the church with far-reaching implications. It teaches the preeminence of the church in God's plan. It teaches that the church is the headquarters for Christ's great commission. The church, being God's house, is to operate by God's ordinances as revealed in Acts and the New Testament epistles. If someone visits your house, he is expected to conduct himself by your rules and not to do whatever he pleases. Man has never had the authority to make a different kind of church than the church that is revealed in the scriptures. Church members are responsible to conduct themselves according to God's word. Church membership is a serious business. It is not something to be taken casually. It is not like membership in a social club. Church membership is only for true disciples of Jesus Christ, and they stand accountable to Him. Christ addressed the church's members in Revelation chapters 2-3, through three, and He dealt sharply with those who were walking disorderly. The church is the household of God, 1 Timothy 3.15. That the church is the house of God means that the church belongs to God. It is God's possession. This is emphasized by the repetition, the house of God, the church of the living God. That the church is the house of God means it is the most famous and important house on earth. Throughout the world, tourists clamored to see the houses of famous people both living and dead, such as George Washington and Bill Gates. But without a doubt, God's house is the most important house. Recently, a report was published listing the richest people in every country, but that is a short-sighted report. Actually, the richest people in every country are those who are joint heirs with the Son of God. That the church is the house of God means this is where God's business is conducted. It is the headquarters of world evangelism, which is the great program that Christ commanded and emphasized after he rose from the dead. In the book of Acts, it is the churches that fulfill his great work. The church should, therefore, be at the center of every believer's life. How can we say that we honor and love God if we do not love his house in the sense of being committed and engaged? The church as the house of God means that it is to be operated by his laws. When I visit a man's house, I am expected to follow his rules. Men have no authority to act as they please in the church. Everything must be done according to God's will as set down in scripture, the sole authority for faith and practice in the church. The church as the house of God means that it is only for God's children. It is necessary to be born again to be qualified to be a church member as we see in the example of the first church in Acts chapter 2. The church as the house of God describes the church as a family. The church is where the people of God are loved, protected, nurtured, educated, developed, and disciplined. It is where they learn to know the Father through the Son. It is where they will learn the will of the Father. It is the nursery for spiritual infants and the training school for spiritual warriors. The church is also called the church of the living God. He is the true and living God as opposed to dead gods. Living encompasses all that God is. The church is the possession of the God who is the source and sustainer of all life. He is omnipotent, omni omniscient, omnipresent, eternal, unchanging, unconquerable, and utterly trustworthy. The church is also the pillar and ground of truth. Truth is the church's chief business. Nothing is more important and more valuable than truth in this dark world of lies. The truth is God's word. The truth is Christ. Now ground refers to the foundation and pillar refers to the proclamation. Note that the pillar and ground of truth is not a denomination or a parachurch organization. This great task is given to the New Testament church alone. The Bible alone would not save the world. There must be an organization, an organization that has its elements of perpetuity, otherwise the truth would go to pieces. If there was no competent body to exercise discipline, to insist upon the gospel elements of the truth in preaching, and to exercise jurisdiction over the preachers of that doctrine, then there will be all sorts of preaching, all sorts of doctrine, and there will be no conversation of truth. The church is the ground of truth. Being the pillar is the chief business of the church. 
So it is mentioned first in this verse. What good is it for the church to be the foundation of the truth if it is not also the pillar of the truth, to broadcast the truth to needy sinners? Bible study without evangelism is not God's will. The church is the grounded truth by possessing the truth. God has delivered the truth to the New Testament churches and this is where a man or woman must come if they want to find the truth. Christ promised that he would send the Spirit which would guide the apostles into all truth, John 16, 13. The apostles and prophets delivered the truth to the churches and the churches received the truth. We see this process in 1 Corinthians 15 where Paul said he received the gospel from Christ and then delivered it to the churches. To possess the truth requires possessing preserved scripture, which shows the importance of the Bible text. We are convinced that the preserved truth is in the Hebrew and Greek manuscripts. The church is the ground of truth by understanding the truth. It is not enough that the church possess the word of God, it must understand it. The church should not merely have a Bible institute, it should be a Bible institute. It must train every believer to be a Bible student and grow up every believer in the full knowledge of truth. This begins with properly trained and qualified leaders who are headmasters of God's infallible truths. If the leaders are weak in their doctrine and in the knowledge of the Word of God, and if they are not capable teachers, the church will not be the ground of truth. The church is the ground of truth by preserving truth. The church preserves the Bible. The completed canon of Scripture has been placed into the hands of the churches to be kept. It is to be passed on from generation to generation by being committed to faithful men, 2 Timothy 2.2. Each generation of Christians are to be taught to observe all things that Christ commanded, which refers to the entire canon of Scripture. The church is the ground of truth by defending the truth. Jude 1.3 says, Earnestly contending for the faith once delivered to the saints. Because there are many enemies of the truth, no position can be maintained without constant indoctrination and aggressive defense. It is said that no position can be maintained with a campaign. It is like a castle being attacked from every side. If the defenders do not watch one of the walls or towers, it will be taken from that side. The New Testament faith is the church's castle, and each doctrine of the faith is assailed by doctrines of devils. The apostles give the example of defending the truth. We see them defending the truth against the Judaizers, the false Christs, false gospels, false spirits and Gnostics, among many others. Again, this is an essential work of preserving the ground of truth and requires extensive and effectual Bible education. You know, the church should be so well educated in Bible truth that it can maintain the truth against every error. Teaching, preserving, and defending truth are fundamentals. If the church does not hold on to the truth, if it is not zealous for truth, and if the believers are not thoroughly grounded in the truth, if the truth is not defended against false teachers, none of the other church's business can be accomplished. The church is the ground of truth by good Christian living. Doctrinal orthodoxy is not enough. The truth must be demonstrated. Note in the following passages that blameless living is necessary to shining as lights in the world. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. Philippians 2. Verse 14 describes the church as the ground of the truth, and verse 15 describes the church as the pillar. This is the theme in Titus chapter 2. The godly living described in that chapter is what becomes sound doctrine. Every category of a Christian is named, old men, old women, young men, young women, and servants. All are given their instructions about good Christian living, and it is this that causes the word of God not to be blasphemed. The church is lastly the pillar of truth. The church is the pillar of the truth to hold it up high before the world. The church is the pillar of truth by proclaiming God's word, by preaching the gospel. The church as the pillar of truth is the church as the candlestick of Christ in Revelation 1 verse 20. To be the pillar of truth is to preach the gospel to every creature. It is to hold forth the word of life. It is to be a witness of Christ to all the earth. It is to be an ambassador for Christ. 
The church must be both the ground and the pillar of truth. As we have said, to be the ground of truth is not enough. To know and love and preserve God's word is an essential business of the church, but it is not an end of itself. It is the foundation for which the word of God is to be proclaimed to a needy world of lost and dying sinners. A church that focuses on Bible study for the saints, but neglects evangelism of the lost is a selfish and dying church. Likewise, it is not enough for a church to be the pillar of truth while neglecting the ground. Some churches have emphasized evangelism and ignored serious Bible study and godly Christian living. 1 Timothy 3.15 summarizes the church's main business, which is Christ's Great Commission. Churches must not get sidetracked to less important things, such as entertainment, sports, politics, or any type of social gospel. Other institutions in this world can do those things and do them better than the churches, but only sound churches can fulfill Christ's great commission. God bless.